recording okay yeah so uh, last time we talked about the geometrical methods of detecting uh, of, of finding the pose of, a, of an opponent given this pixels of interest using geometrical division techniques then we talked about uh, a neural network framework known as uh, uh, YOLO you only look once and how it can be helpful to detect the particular features that you're interested in to um, and then which we will further can uh, take into account to find the exact pose of the vehicle today we will be talking uh, more to the side of programming because uh, you are working with ross in this entire lecture in this exact uh, sorry in this entire course and uh, images are heavy to work with so transferring images um over the serialized network of pub uh, of publishers and subscribers of our topics is a little heavy so we we use so most of the good packages that you'll come across which deal with um, images being published in raw or topics more often than not will be using uh, something known as pointers right uh, sorry something known as nodelets uh, which essentially are pointers as we will talk about it in the coming few slides. So uh, to understand nodelets, it's it's it, you can think about it as uh, nodes within a node. So for example, in this schematic, you see that we create a namespace which is being governed by a nodelet manager. The nodelet manager itself is a node. Now what the nodelet manager will do is that it will run all the nodes as nodelets inside itself so inside this nodelet a node is running which is publishing topics right inside this nodelet a node is running which is receiving these topics similarly say there is another nodelet manager which has a node which is being run by a nodelet and it is receiving topics so what's the difference when i run a node inside of a nodelet instead of running it standalone as a node the difference is that when it being when it's being run inside nodelet managers you can transfer the the information that is being passed between the two nodes which are now being run as nodelets not by passing the entire data you don't pass the entire image from one node to another node you pass only the memory pointers the memory locations the memory addresses from one node to another node so because memory addresses is very short is very is very minimum amount of data it becomes faster to publish them and loss of data over time becomes less so that's like a general concept of what nodelet does and why it is important so excuse me so so why do we use this we would use this because we want to reduce our overhead of computation and we want because we on top of detection we are also performing the task of prediction so we want our detection to be as fast as possible so that the that the computation that is taking place in the prediction has enough time to get updated as fast as possible right so for example in scan matching did you guys uh, can anyone tell me was there any scenario in which you felt that if my code was running faster or i was getting information faster i it it could have been better performance did any of one of you like think about that in scan matching anybody right could have had more iterations that mean in order to have more iterations we should have had more time for running those iterations or better yet could have parallelized those iterations so that we could have had done more computations on the same data so similarly in case of nodelets so we talked about i will use the april tag repository have the information from the images use the april tag repository to output the output the detections and the poses now the prediction part will take in the detection and the poses and perform the predictions but if the detections in the poses are not coming in as fast as possible we do not have new data to work with in our prediction and the car is already moved ahead 
So we want this block, the April Tax Repository, to be as fast as possible so that we can have our computations running synchronously and as, as much real time as possible. So what do we do? We shared memory instead of the entire data. So there are a couple of components of the Nodelets architecture which are pretty important. First of all, it's the plugin library. Plugin library is a is generic, is a standalone system. It's not only related to Nodelets. It's it's just a library which is loaded at runtime instead of compile time. Do all Nodelets run on separate threads within the same node? No. So one node, one Nodelet, right? All the nodelets, if I go back to the, so one node, one nodelet, one node, one nodelet. All the nodelets in the system under one nodelet manager. Does that make sense? Answer question, or no? Because A, it is, it's a little bit harder to code. I mean, if you're just beginning with ROS, it'll be, you'll have a little bit of hard time understanding all the intricacies which go with it. B, it is only available in C++, right? So most, most important one is it's only available in C++. It does not have support for Python. And it has been like past couple of years or two years or three years since it's been launched, it's been used extensively. Like in the last, Two years or two three years, it's been it, it has gained momentum to be used in packages. Before that, it did not exist. C plus plus is the main reason why it's still not being used so extensively, because it's only done in C plus plus. So it's more like distributed. Yeah. So plugin libraries, uh, predefined interfaces which are loaded at runtime. So essentially, you can use the plugin library to perform um, changes in your node while it is being done during runtime, right? So there are interfaces for the function calls and they can be used during runtime instead of um, compile time. So you can not define certain things and then load them at runtime and run them. So that's what plugin library provides you the advantage of. Then nodelet manager is an extension of plugin library. So nodelet managers allow you to help the nodelets communicate between each other uh, during runtime, right? So the nodelet manager is the plugin, which then allows you to, instead of transferring data at runtime, transfer the memory pointers during runtime, right? Before even specifying in your code that uh, this is the particular memory pointer, which you define in case of topics, that this is the particular topic I'll be publishing. You don't have to do that. You just have to publish the topic itself and specify a nodelet, and the nodelet manager will take care of publishing the topic as a memory pointer instead of a, as the data itself. Does that make sense? Any questions? All right. Now, uh, we'll because it's just a programming concept. We have covered the fundamentals of how the nodelets and nodes. Uh, yes, is it more? It, it's more or less a wrapper. So when you code it, you'll see. Uh, if I show you, do I have an example? Let me just show you something real quick. <laughs> Where can you show it? Atom. So I'm going to show you a simple nodelet implementation, which is not a lab implementation which might give you an idea of what's going on here. So, okay, so can I switch my screen? So, 
yeah so if you see here like this is the main node where you um where you specify the node handle and all the main function uh and this is the header file for that so you can create like a separate file which is just for the nodelet right and then what you can do is you can uh, call the node itself inside it and then wrap the node in the nodelet which has all the specifications for the nodelet managers right so nodelets you create a all these things we'll talk about in a short while but essentially you can like create everything that you do in a node as is as you normally do right and then just call that node in your nodelet file right so yes to answer your question yes it's you can think of it as a wrapper around it now prison now window One moment I have to this yeah. Okay, so going back to this, yeah. So um, there will be a few things. So you there are not a lot of resources for this uh, out there on the internet you may have some hard time like finding resources and it will be complicated because it's not used as much as like ross is so like for topics and stuff you'll get a lot of community support but for this you might not so i'll just give you like specific pointers to where to focus on so that you do not spend a lot of time just trying to find out how to code this uh, of course you'll be coding this on your own but you'll have like you, you you know where you'll know where to look at so first of all you will be creating a node list class apart from the node class itself something like which i showed you on in the script before there will be a node list class and uh, you will change dependencies in the cmake lists Apart from the package.xml that you have been using till now, there will also be a nodelet plugins.xml that you will load in the package.xml, right? Then you'll have to change your launch file because if you saw in the previous uh, slides, uh, there's also a nodelet manager being launched, which is also a node an inside which node that's run. So you will also have to launch the nodelet manager in the launch file inside which the nodelets will be launched, right? So creating a node list class with certain specifications, um, you will be deriving from the nodelet package, which you will uh, call uh, nodelet nodelet.h was the package. Uh, it's in the it will be in the it will be in the handout and in the skeleton code. Now one specific thing is that the nodelet class works off of a virtual function called on init so the so the constructor that you normally um, create in c++ instead of that constructor which you have which i here like just created and destroyed uh we will create a kind of a constructor it's not a constructor but in the sense that this honor function is inside where all the all the information from the which you would provide in the constructor will lie the on end function is like also existing in the node lips package because that's where you are like deriving it from. Uh, and since you specify things here, it will overrule the base node lit function on it. Does that make sense? Like, are there people who are absolutely not uh, familiar with class inheritances? So I'll explain a little bit more base class parent class child classes class inheritance is there anyone who's like absolutely clueless about this concept of class inheritance uh, 
uh, by abstract class you mean the sample noted class or the nodelet, nodelet class yeah sample nodelet class yeah so the public nodelet nodelet class this is the package which is written already by ross and it comes as is it has certain functions what which it like uses to perform the, all the nodelet functions but the only function that we are interested in is the onnet function inside which it needs the specifications of the nodelet that you are creating the node that you are um, that you you will be working on the name of the nodelets and certain other things i i will talk about the onnet function in a second okay. does that answer your question sonu cool right so we have we, we create a class with certain specifications which are uh, specific to nodelets now inside this on it functions we initialize the ros parameters which we normally do inside a constructor right so we get a node handle a node handle or a private node handle you specify your subscribers you specify your publishers and all those things which you would might want to do inside an on it function also there are multiple ways of implementing this this is the most basic one what i showed you before was just an example to stress upon the fact that it is it works as a as kind of a wrapper because if you saw in that example which i showed you as a script the publishers and subscribers were not um were not initialized in the on end function right it can be so what i'm saying is that there are multiple ways to do it this is the most basic way which i'm showing you on the on the slides uh, to begin with and what you would want to use to start off with other ways re require more like object oriented programming and all this stuff which you might like require time to work on so this is the most first basic way that you should start upon create a on end function uh, you can use both so like it it's just an example you can use like here i've used nh everywhere and private nh for the publisher and nh for the subscribers you can look up what's the difference between the two it it's simple it's it's uh, it's just like what any other object is when you specify them to be private or public right it's just an example you can have just one two it does not right so you specify all the properties of the nodelet class or it's going to have inside this void init function and then you specify the nodelet that you that you will be using a nodelet in the main function so you create a nodelet object right and then you uh, remap so this is just like if you have any um, command time variables that you want to supply for arg v or arg c and then you give a name to the nodelet right and uh, then you node load the nodelet using the remappings that is specified for your command time arguments and that's it. this is this is more like programming so i'm just pointing you in the right directions for you to look at and you can start off right then you will be changing the cmake lists you will if we are using nodelets so you will need to find the nodelet package then your catkin dependencies will also have nodelets so and then you will be linking those libraries just like you do normally for the nodelets for, for the nodes right so yeah so if there are multiple nodelets you can put them in a single library and work off of them right then you also have to specify in the package.xml files that nodelet is a build and run dependency and something i mentioned in the beginning that you will be required to create like a separate nodelets plugin xml file which you will export here this one nodelets plugin xml file and this xml file will only have like the nodelet proper nodelet classes that uh, <clears throat> in the in the package that you are creating there is a nodelet class the name of that and that's it right so it needs to know that it's it's this nodelet class that you created and it is being inherited uh, it it's it's being derived from base class which is the package itself the nodelet nodelet package 
Any questions so far? This is more of an implementation portion than a algebraic um, algorithmic understanding. Right. Then, as I said, you will need to edit the launch file. So here you see you launch a nodelet package, nodelet manager. You can call like multiple nodelet managers, right? And you can, in that nodelet manager, you can like load uh, multiple files. So in this example, we are loading sample nodelet class and sample nodelet class two inside the same nodelet manager, sample nodelet manager, right? So nodes, nodelet, uh, nodelet manager, nodelets, nodes. Nodes get loaded into the nodelets. Nodelets get loaded into one or more nodelet managers launched through the launch file, right? So like here, you first have the nodelet manager being running and then you load the nodelets inside those nodelet managers. There are like a few resources which are good. Um, there may be more. Okay, uh, question. So we just launched the nodelet nodes and not the nodes, right? Yes, 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 that's correct. Because the nodes are being now called in the nodelets, so when you run that executable, so for example, I'll just show you the CMake list actually. Um, actually, yeah, uh, tell me if it's clear what I say. If it's not, I'll try to show you the script. But essentially, yes, we just launched the nodelets. But if you saw, I had called the node header file inside the nodelet script, right? So when I create an executable through the CMakes list, the node is already existing inside the nodelet. And the executable encapsulates the node and the nodelet. So when you run the nodelet, the node run it, runs on itself. Does that make sense? Sorry. Yes, no. No, okay. I'll, I'll just show you the. I'll, I'll show you the CMake list. see here right so here I am um, when I'm creating the node I'm adding the nodelet I'm adding the nodelet I'm creating the onyx underscore nodelet using three scripts right bounding box infer nodelet bounding box infer node and infer process.cpp right and this onyx nodelet is finally used as a target link. Now, if I check out this uh, bounding box and for nodelet, I will have SRC, LIDAR infer, SRC, infer node. Yeah, so it has nodelet.h. So if I see that, it has um, where go? For node okay yeah bounding box in for a node yeah 
So if I see a bounding box input node dot h, it already has a bounding box input node dot h, which essentially is the entire implementation of the node. Right. So bounding box input node has the implementation of the node. Uh, the header file for which is this. Now I call this header file and hence the entire implementation in the node let itself, right? And then I specify my CMAKES list that uh, all these three are created as a library. And hence I create an executable using all the three scripts. So, so the node let, the node are encapsulated into one single executable. Does that make sense? Which is the Onyx node let. Uh, okay. Okay, what you saying? Uh, in build executables, I saw one of the mounting box node itself and mount the modules. Okay. And executables. Yeah. This now. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is added as a library executable. This is not just an executable. It's, it's the same thing. Does that make sense? So this is the node-led executable as a library. OK. Right. Again, like these are implementation details, and you can, if you have doubts, you can always, uh, you can have a chat on Office Hours, or you can look, you can look online. I'm pretty sure that you can get the difference between like, what does it mean by adding the library and then creating executable, or just creating simply an executable. Okay, so. There are uh, a, num a few resources that we have put forth to for you guys to go through, uh, which you can look at in order to just like have a feel of how it's done. Again, a few of them will have like different kinds of implementations, but if you understand what's actually going on, it would be pretty much straightforward to do what you have to do, which is that we will provide you with the April tax repository, which does not have nodelets and we will we would want you to convert it into a notebooks package right so in the in the handout we will have like specifications of where to look at like this is the function where you might have to add this look at this function look at this function change this maybe change this and that or this and that so there will be hints so it will not be like shooting in the dark and the april tag repository is not a very complicated package so it will not be a lot of trouble so in its entirety, these are the things that will be required to get done in this lab. You will detect and publish the pose of an April tag in real time, right? You'll have a bag of the images of the April tag mounted behind a car running. Then you will implement the vehicle tracking and prediction algorithm. Then you will try and experiment your uh, vehicle tracking prediction algorithm on a back file. Right, and then finally rewrite the bare April tax repository to an OLED based repository. So, up till here, like this component is not actually required in order to do any of these. This is just to make it fast, this is just to make the process faster. And in the past, what we have seen is that more than fast, the speed might not increase a lot because it's not very heavy data, it's okay, it's images, uh, but. It, there will be some changes, but more than that, there will be change in the covariance of the frequency. So, like if it's so, when you do ROS topic has, you do ROS topic at Z, it shows you the average frequency and it shows you the variance in the frequency. So, the variance in frequency decreases by a lot. Frequency of publishing. So, yeah, so you this the first one should be more or less plug and play with the April Times repository that will provide you then this will require say a day and uh, once you're done with this this will require probably half a day then this is the main portion which might require two or three days 
So I know, like in the beginning, I heard that you guys had some questions about if you can get a extension on this Vision Lab, but we have tried to make this Vision Lab very, very light so that it does not creep into your uh, project time, right? So that's about it. Uh, these are the steps that you have to do. The The lab will be on by like evening or tonight. I'll try to make more hints in the handout so that it's easier for you given the circumstances. And I guess that's all. Right. Uh, and I think, yeah. Rahul, are you here? Do you want to take it from here? Rahul, where is, did he go? Okay, I think Rahul has gone to take care of his kids. Um, Billy, do you have anything else that you want to talk about? Nope. Okay. Um, I think Matt has also left. Matt, 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 Matt has left. Okay. Uh, Anybody else has any questions? All right, all right, then I'll post the lab and we'll meet again on Wednesday. Okay, see you guys, bye. Oh, okay, Arnav has a question. Uh, does everyone have the, f oh, no, Arnav is not a question that is old. Okay, yeah, all right, see you guys, bye.